Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Chris Mackey and this is your ninth tutorial on Honeybee Energy Simulation. And if you guys have been following along with the past few videos, you know that we've set up and run an energy simulation of my, my parents' house right here. And we visualized some results in, we, you know, we got the basics. You guys now have the basics of, of knowing how to run an energy model. And now the rest of this series is going to be sort of devoted to making sure that, that the energy simulation that you guys run is, is actually indicative of, of what you're hoping to build uh, and so we're going to start off we're going to kick off this big section of, uh, of, of videos from here on out uh, by looking uh, deeply into the the rules of geometry that that energy plus abides by and uh, and as sort of in the rules for, for setting up these these zones that I kind of gave you in the first few videos but now I'm going to show you exactly you know when you have your own project what what how would the way by which you should set those zones up um, so, so the next three videos are going to be on this this sort of geometry rules, and uh, and this is especially important. These next three videos are especially important if uh, if you are not so familiar with the the, the way that geometry works in Energy Plus, uh, because this it's particularly a lot of these rules. It took me a long time to to sort of get the sense of them and and understand why they are the way they are. Um, but uh, but I'm going to give you guys an accelerated course by uh, by by. Uh, giving you a bunch of the hints and giving you guys a head start. Um, and if you, you are familiar, if you know exactly how geometry is input into Energy Plus right now, I think you'll find that we have a lot of pretty good tools uh, to sort of help make things faster for you. Because after all, Rhino is, is a wonderful 3D modeling interface. It's the big strength that we sort of get from Honeybee. So, all right, so enough said. Um, well, before, and actually, okay, one more thing though. Before we dive deep into, into sort of some of these geometry rules, I just wanted to say that there's a lot of, a lot of uh, the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about is actually covered in this big Big document here uh, on on the, the GOE website. This is this is specifically if, if I go all the way up to the top. It's a getting started with Energy Plus uh, set of documentation, and they've got uh, if we scroll down sort of midway through it about you know some pretty useful stuff in terms of how you should set up your geometry. So if you guys ever get deeper and far beyond where where I am, you should definitely take a look at this. And I posted a link to this this document by the way in the in the 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 uh, description of this video. Um, but you can see they sort of lay out rules for how you should zone things and stuff and break up buildings sort of as I have here uh, with my family's house. So all right, to dive into this now a bit further. All right, so first, I mean, we're done with I said we're done with uh, visualization and everything and, and running the simulations. So I'm just going to delete all this stuff uh, and everything else now is going to be to the left side of, uh, of this this run simulation component uh, from here on out. So so first off, all right, I'm going to bring back actually my Rhino geometry, unhide that stuff in my in my Rhino scene right now, so I can show you guys a bit more about this geometry that I had given you guys uh, in in that we've simulated in the last few videos. And actually, I'm going to specifically show you that um, a very important factor about adjacent surfaces in Energy Plus. And so the thing is, you guys will notice that, like, I mean, if you look at any two zones that I had in this model that we've run, um, you'll see that it's very important to have, if I move these away, that there's a redundancy of, of this, of the imprint of this surface on the side of this surface. And that's important because, well, actually, if I'm just going to explode this. So, so this surface and... And, and, and this surface have to be the same geometry. They have to have the same coordinates. Um, and that's important because energy plus is, you know, it's, it's, it's basically, you know, mostly just, uh, just looking at heat flows across surfaces um, when, it, when it makes this energy model. And in order to do that correctly, these, these surfaces need to have the same area so that it's, you know, otherwise it'll sort of violate the co principles of conservation of energy. Um, so that's that's why it's very important to have matching surfaces on either side, um, and and uh, well, and actually, I should also say that if you were to run this model without having matching surfaces, you'd get something out of this report that tells you that the laws of of energy conservation have been violated essentially. So you'll you'll get actually an error, and it'll say probably severe error, and that's why you should usually check this report because uh, because it'll give you a full documentation of all the some of the assumptions that are made and and some of the errors that can come out of your simulations. So that's that. That's a place where you should double check that. But we've also um, I, we have a component that automatically can can you know can split these this you know if, if your surfaces aren't matching exactly across two we have a component that will automatically split uh, split the, the like this surface you know with the the outline of that surface and specifically now to get get more back into our grasshopper scene now that component that does that. 
is is this awesome one under under the the zero honeybee tab and uh, and it's specifically it's called true to its name intersect masses um, and so this is this is a component here you see it's a it's a pretty small one it just takes building masses before and building masses after and let's say I mean all right I've got I've got actually those exact two zones that we've been looking at uh, over here but but the thing is you'll notice now I you know this this doesn't have any any uh, sort of the imprint of this surface on that one. So now if I were to take these two B reps, um, these two poly surfaces, and bring them into Rhino, um, you can see I'll just, uh, you know, I have them both selected in the Rhino scene and I go set multiple B reps. You'll see that I, if once I pass the B reps through this, this split building masses, and, um, and you know, and let's say I'll, I'll hide this right now so I can show you guys, and maybe I'll, I'll turn the preview off on this. But if we look at the B reps that we get back out of it, because you see what we get out are two closed B reps just as we put them in there. But you'll see that now, now that imprint will be on the other surface. So if I bake this into the Rhino scene, and let's see, I'll just bake it on, bake it onto the default layer, um, so if you guys can see now, now these zones after being passed through this, you'll see if I open this up now it's well, and maybe let's say I'll turn the preview off so it's perfectly clear. But you'll see now it's got the imprint of, of that surface on, on that, that thing. So then, then now that is going to you know, be true to conservation of energy, and, and that'll, that'll work out nicely that way. So the thing is, I mean, if you have a bunch of masses that you're not so sure if, they, if they're all sort of matching in terms of surface area and, and you know, across the different ones, you can run it through this one. And that'll ensure that that'll intersect all the masses, and and ensure that that there's a corresponding surface of equal area on on any adjacent zones, essentially. So that's that's what this component is for. And I know that's I mean this is well, it's I guess this is this is really all that we well well we needed to cover in this one. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, but but you guys get the sense of this, and I mean, and that's essentially I could say this is that is what I did with these zones before before we ran the whole simulation that that you guys have run through. The way that I got all these surfaces to match essentially across the other ones is that I I made zones and I ran them through this thing and then baked them into my scene. But you know, you guys can take this. I mean, you know, instead of you, we could have all these building masses, and you guys can just add this into the workflow right before the you know the 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 uh, mass to zones here because I mean this is still on the level where it's just geometry notice that they're saying building masses or, or, or you know we're saying building masses instead of honeybee zones so just any normal geometry goes through this and this this usually can fit in the workflow right before this one actually you know what I'll just put that here so you guys know that uh, that that you know this can feed right into there if you have a bunch of other zones for 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 that case. So okay, so this was that was the whole point of this video. I know that was that you know maybe we didn't necessarily need a whole video to do that, but but that sort of principle is very important that you need matching surfaces uh, in order to get energy plus to run correctly. And so now that we've done that, and you guys got a sense of that important geometry rule, next one we're going to look into zoning, how, how, how you would typically zone a, a building mass, a large building mass if you had one. Um, so that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.